like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk, that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. O Christu, O Pensi, my dear brothers and sisters, Tumsifu Yesu Christu. God is good. And all the time, Karibuni katika ibada yetu ya leo. Today we gather here once again as Easter children to continue celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. We continue to celebrate Christ as the light of the world as the Easter candle continue to burn before us, we continue to contemplate on that light that Jesus has become for this world that enlightens the darkness of this world. We gather here as God's people, as a family of God. And usually as the word of God today will tell us, Whenever two people gather to speak about God, Christ is in their midst, as he assured his disciples and he continues to assure the church that where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. And where people gather to worship, to pray, to break the bread together, good things happen. And that is what happened to the disciples as they were gathered together in the upper room after the event of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ for fear of the, G of the Jews. It is at that moment in that gathering together that Christ appeared to them and he wished them peace. Christ would like to encounter us, to meet us today, and he wants to wish us peace. And especially as we continue to deal with this devastating uh, virus that is affecting uh, us as a, as a nation and as humanity. Today, we celebrate the Divine Mercy Sunday and we want to plead God for his mercy. We want to come to the fountain of mercy of God and ask God to have mercy on the world, to have mercy on us, and uh, as much as possible to intervene in the fight against the coronavirus. Tupenda kuja katika chemichemi ya huruma ya Mungu katika Jumapili hii tumuombe Mungu aweze kuwa na huruma kwetu na aweze kutusamehe dhambi zetu dhambi za ulimwengu na atusaidie katika kupigana na ili janga la corona We would like to thank the two small Christian communities who are animating this mass even remotely the small Christian community of St. Anne and the small Christian community of St. Augustine. We thank God for each one of them. We thank God for whatever they continue to do to continue supporting the church. And we pray for each one of them. May bless them and sustain us all in faith. We bring their intentions as individuals, as families, and as small Christian communities and carry them along on the altar of the Lord as we offer this one and special offering of Eucharistic sacrifice 
for the sake of all of us. Let us now call to mind our sins, and especially those moments in our lives we have not depended fully on God. We have not trusted in the mercy of God. Those moments we have decided to keep away from the community where good things happen, where Jesus appears to us in communities, in the gathering where we pray and break the bread together. For those moments, we have been isolated from the community of life, the community of prayer, and the community of the breaking of the bread. We want to ask for mercy and for forgiveness. Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, we pray, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Brethren, God steadfastly to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, and ate all things in common. And they sought their possession and goods and distributed them to all as any had need. A day by day, attending the table together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with grand and generous heart, praising God and having favor with God for his good, his mercy and us. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures last time. In this you rejoice. Though now for a little while, you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than God, which though perishable is tested by fire, may redoubt to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, you love him, though you do not know Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with an terrible and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Because you have seen me, says the Lord, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. from the Holy Gospel according to John.
on the evening of that day, the first day of the week. The doors being shut, we are the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hand and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you return the sins of any, they are returned. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand on his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believe in. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. For these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. You believed, Thomas, because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet they believe. Your brothers and sisters, your present, and those are dear ones, parishioners and friends following us remotely, I would like to reflect with you on the readings of today, the liturgy of today, under the, the theme, the joy of belonging and the pain of being left out. The joy of belonging, being part of, and the pain of being left out. Common knowledge has taught us that a human being is a social being. If there is anything that differentiates a human person from the rest of creation, animals and plants is that fact that uh, a human being would like to always uh, belong, to be part of, to socialize. As the common saying goes, that no one is an island because we are created to commune with others, to socialize with others. And therefore, the feeling of belonging is very important 
at, and it defines us as human beings. Those of you who must have, uh, who, uh, have children or who have dealt with children, you don't even have to teach them that uh, they are human beings by virtue of belonging. Sometimes you hear them, how they complain when they are left out by their fellow children. If there is a play they are playing or something they are doing, the child will come crying and saying, uh, they have left me out or they don't want me to play with them or they, uh, they have uh, taken me out of this uh, play. Um, that shows that uh, it is uh, a yearning that each human being has to be part of and not to be left out. And any attempt to be left out leads to people to feel isolated and to feel that they are not worthy um, and they are not needed. And they tell us that um, those of us who are Africans, that that is even much more so in our nature, that uh, we are even much more social and we are created to uh, belong uh, together. One of the African uh, authors and uh, uh, writers who passed away uh, last year, John Beatty, has even described us Africans as notoriously social. And he says that what differentiates us Africans from maybe the white people is particularly that aspect of uh, wanting to be belong to a community. He says, whereas for us Africans, the saying goes, I am because we are, and because we are, therefore I am. Maybe a, a Westerner, somebody from Europe would be, believe more in uh, we are because I am, and uh, because I am, therefore we are. So for us, the we, the community, comes first, and we define ourselves according to community, according to uh, the manner of uh, belonging. And this seems to be the same principle that operates in Christianity. Because when Jesus came, the first thing he did was to invite people to uh, his community, to his fellowship. He called the 12, he called the 72, and every time he went out to different villages to proclaim the kingdom of God, he, glor he gloried in uh, getting people come to him. He called people uh, to follow him. He was always a person of the crowd. Crowds gathered around him, and they felt happy to belong. And uh, when Jesus called the disciples, the first thing he expected of them is to belong to him, to be part of him, to form a community with him. Remember what Jesus told Peter during the night of betrayal, uh, that is uh, on the Holy Thursday, that if you don't want me to wash your uh, feet, you don't have any community with me. Because community is part of the, that discipleship, that Jesus expected the disciples to be first of all with him. Going out and proclaiming the kingdom of God out there was the second, but the first was to form that community. And ourselves, when we are baptized as Christians, we, are, we become part of this community. We are drawn into this community. We become a Christian community. And it is that way we have party with God, party with our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are supposed to belong to be part of that community. In the story of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ that um, uh, we hear that after Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he continued to appear to his disciples and to many other people. And in all the accounts of appearance, Jesus appeared to his disciples and to others like Mary Magdalene at first in a community. There is no single appearance that Jesus appeared to an individual. 
He appeared to the disciples walking on their way to Emmaus. He appeared to um, Mary Magdalene and the other uh, Mary. He appeared to the um, disciples as they were gathered uh, together. And uh, in the gospel today, it is also reporting that appearing of Jesus to a community. That means community and um, communion is not insignificant in our Christian calling and in Jesus' discipleship. And um, there is therefore joy in belonging, there is joy in being with Jesus, and that is what Jesus expects of all his brothers and sisters. That is what Jesus expected of his disciples. In the first reading, we are told that the early Christian community, they knew about this call to belong together as they were waiting for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are told that they continued to pray together. They continued to uh, worship together. They continued to break the bread together. And as a community, none of them missed anything because they understood that they are brothers and sisters. And as brothers and sisters, none of them should be in want. The one who has should be able to take care of the other. Then they had to meet together to pray together. They had to meet together to break the bread together. So they always remained as a community because they were witnessing to the following of Jesus who has called people together as a community and to keep the life of communion uh, with him. What happens to Thomas? Thomas is not with others in the community. And when Jesus is appearing to his disciples in the upper room, as they were all um, gathered to pray together, and uh, in fear of the Jews, uh, Thomas was not there. And that's why he, did not, he was not party to, uh, uh, to that what Jesus did to them. And that's why he was so affected the moment he realized that they came to him and they told him that Jesus has appeared to them. He was unhappy until the time, of course, Jesus decided also to appear to them when he is in, their, uh, in, in, in the midst of the community. And that's why uh, from these readings, we see that there is joy in belonging because in belonging, in being together as a community, good things happen. The appearances of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the, of the risen Lord, appeared in a community. That is good news. Those are good things that happened uh, to the disciples of Jesus. And Thomas, who was missing, was not part of that good uh, thing. And if, uh, because Jesus wanted Thomas also to experience the same, he waited again a week after when they gathered together. And Thomas now did not want to distance himself from the community. He joined the community. And at that point, Jesus appears to them. And of course, he's able to address to him uh, and he's teaching uh, him, among many things, the need to remain connected with others, to remain with others in a, in a community. What can we learn from the teachings of today? The first reading, talking about the small, the first early Christian community, gathering together, to pray together, to break the bread together, to enrich themselves from the teachings of the apostles and to, and, and to help others who are needy. What can we learn from the appearance of Jesus to the disciples when they are gathered? And even um, the, 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 the pain of Thomas who, who absented himself from the community. We learn that we are called by Jesus Christ to form a community. We are called to belong. We are called to be together with others. We are called uh, to be with the rest of the community uh, like we are doing today. Because it is in that community that Jesus is able to reveal himself, to manifest his goodness to the people. It is in a gathered community like this that Jesus is present. He promised it himself that where two or three are gathered in my name, 
I am there in their midst. He appeared to the disciples in a community of prayer. And so he is also going to appear to us. He is going to manifest himself to us when we read the word of God and when we break the bread together. And we pray for each one of us, even that part of our community that is not able to be with us here physically. We know that we are united with them. We know that they are part of this community and we don't want to isolate ourselves from the community. We want to pray that um, in spite of this um, uh, coronavirus outbreak that is tending to um, uh, separate us physically, that it may not manage uh, to keep us uh, separated from one another. We want to pray together as a community. We, wanted, we want to be challenged uh, uh, of the need to be with others, the need to belong, to belong to a family, which is a church in its miniature, to belong to a small Christian community, and to belong to the entire church uh, that uh, we are a part of. We pray also uh, that God may continue supporting us uh, with his peace as he wished peace to his disciples when he appeared to them. As he appears to us here and now, may he also give us peace, especially during this uh, period. As we celebrate the Sunday of, uh, of, of mercy, divine mercy, we pray that God may have mercy on us, may have mercy on the world, may have mercy on those who are uh, suffering. We pray that we may be able to approach the fountain of mercy and draw uh, from uh, uh, the multitude uh, and uh, from the greatness of the mercy of God uh, as Jesus promised to St. Faustina when he appeared to her and he promised her great mercy to the world and especially to those who are able uh, to receive the blessed uh, Eucharist and also to uh, undertake the sacrament of uh, con reconciliation of confession. We pray for this mercy uh, to come towards uh, each and every one of us. We thank God for uh, all what he has continued to uh, make of us, and particularly for making us an Easter community. And we pray that this unity, this oneness, uh, may continue to grow in each one of us, that he may keep us united, one in faith and one in doctrine. My nails together, Lord, my nails together with Let us arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God,
The reason Christ brought his peace to the apostles as he showed them his pierced hands and side. Let us pray confidently in his name, knowing that he brings true peace through his victory over death. that the whole community of the church may remain faithful to the teaching of the apostles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the peace of our risen Lord may spread through our world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the divine mercy may bring peace to our world. Let us pray to the Lord. That we will share our goods and possessions through generosity and Christian hospitality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who are sick in the world, and especially through this coronavirus disease, that they may get healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the faithful departed will enter the sure hope and promise of their heavenly inheritance, especially all, all those who have died in our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the grace of God and healing during this challenging time of the COVID-19 pandemic, that God may heal all the, all the interest, the infected and affected and grant our doctors and scientists the wisdom and courage to curb the manners. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord gracious For the special intentions of the members of the small Christian community of St. Anne and St. Augustine who are animating our Mass today, that God may bless them, bless their families, and meet all of them at their point of need. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Father of infinite mercy, we do not see your son, but we love him and offer our prayers in his name. We rejoice because we believe in him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, our Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just and duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. And so overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, 
he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of course an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity. Your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, John our Cardinal, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and entire people you have gained for your faith. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Oh,
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our name is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive us who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles and we say to each one of us here present, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And your Let us offer each other a sign of peace. We are preparing to receive Christ in the Eucharist. We are aware of many of us who are following us remotely, who are not able to partake of the physical Christ, body and blood. And we want to pray for them as they join us. In the, spirit, in the spiritual reception of the body of Christ, that they may be able to receive Christ spiritually and Christ Jesus present in the Eucharist may bless them. We pray with them. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire very much to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Lord. I am not worthy to receive you under my roof, but say only one word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Behold Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to his banquet. Lord, the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
bring your hand, Thomas, and feel the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and ask for God's blessings. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion, may he defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, endow you with prize of immortality. Amen. Now the days of the Lord's passion have, drawn, have, have ended, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalt in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and your dear ones and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.